we justify it. But see, in the Old Testament, they had temple prostitutes. And they would prostitute themselves out, and they would often get pregnant, and they had two options. They would either um, abort the child, or they would allow the child to go full term, and then they would sacrifice the child by burning it alive no. and offering to their gods. That is what it means when it says passing through the fire. Now, I want you to understand something. We do the same thing today. Only we don't, we don't call it pagan religion, and we don't call it um, sacrifices to an, um, another god. We do it for ourselves. We live in a society that is sexually perverse, and we say you can have sex with whoever you want. No big deal. If you get pregnant, we'll just abort it. You ever know what happens to aborted children? They put them in a bag, they throw them in the trash, and then they throw them into an incinerator. An incinerator is a giant fire. We are essentially, in this day and age, passing our children through the fire still. So for those of you who maybe don't find value in the Old Testament, there it is. But here's the powerful part. Here's the part of, of hope. Here's the part of compassion. Here's the part that I really want you to understand. Verse 13 says, after it says all the things you shouldn't do, it says this. You shall live blameless before the Lord your God. You can live blameless. You can live without sin. You can be free from sin. The question today is what does blameless look like in your life? What does blameless look like in your life? I don't know your life. I don't know your struggles. I don't know what you're holding on to. Maybe it's alcohol. Maybe it's addiction. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's, uh, I, you name it. I don't know it. But the bottom line is, you can live blameless. Yeah. You can live without those things. Yeah. Perhaps you're not wrapped up in witchcraft, but the principles are the same. When we, become, when we come before an almighty God with our confessions, he will begin to point out things that we need to get rid of, and we need to be sensitive to that. Because if we don't acknowledge his voice, eventually we'll stop hearing his voice. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know what you need to get rid of. You know what you need to sacrifice to an almighty God in his fires. I need to let go of my addictions. I need to let go of my anxiety. I need to let go of my fear, my shame. I need to cleanse my life. I need to stop watching this, and I need to stop listening to that. Yeah. I need to get rid of apathy and laziness. Yes. What needs to change today that will allow you to live blameless before an almighty God? I want to use an example, and I hope uh, this doesn't offend anybody. And then, again, maybe it will convict somebody, so it's up to you. I have so many friends who smoke. And it's funny because smoking is one thing that I think all of society says, well, you should quit smoking. And they'll even buy a pack of cigarettes on their way to church and then smoke a cigarette on their way to church and then they'll hear a, a message like this where, you know, the pastor's talking about giving things up. And in the back of their mind, they're like, I'm going to quit smoking today. But then they go, but I just spent $6. <laughs> I, I don't want to waste $6. So I'll tell you what, I'll finish the pack. And then I'll quit. When God calls you to give something up, no matter what the cost, you give it up. No matter what the cost, you give it up. And if you fall off the horse, you get back up, you dust yourself off, you find a friend, you confess your sins, and you get back up and you do it again. You keep moving forward. Amen. God calls us to be blameless. <clears throat> as long as these things are, as long as these past pet sins remain, there will always be a barrier that keeps you at arm's length. You realize that you serve an almighty God that wants to embrace you, and yet you keep him like this? This is your addiction. This is your problem. This is everything that you want to hold on to. This is your safety net. You're going, I got this. And he's sitting there going, I just want, I just want to hold you. I just want to hug you. I just want to love you. Now I'm good, God. I got it. 